Uh, I'm um, interested in uh, the human behavior and the urban psychology, how human uh, behave within uh, public spaces and how to create uh, and make uh, public spaces uh, uh, successful and entertaining for, to the user. And Asma? Uh, Asma, if you please. Uh, I'm Asma uh, I'm an electrical engineer. And currently, uh, I am uh, general manager uh, at National Organization for the Water and Sanitary Drainage. Uh, in my work, uh, I am responsible for implementing uh, water and sanitary stations. Okay. Um, I think we can start. Um, thanks for the introductions. Um, welcome to the Alexandria team uh, for the third River Cities Network presentation. We're very happy to uh, to have you present your uh, really interesting project. I had the, the luck to visit your uh, project site in June. I had a wonderful guide by the name of Mohammed, <laughs> who's our uh, speaker. And I met uh, Nancy also at uh, her campus just outside Cairo. So it's a pleasure to see you again and to welcome you for this presentation. Um, we are being recorded, so I would say, uh, please go ahead. We will, as usual, have a question and answer session after the presentation, and then I will stop the recording. So uh, the, the Q&A session itself will not be recorded. And I see Shirelle has joined us. Hello, Shirelle. I just want to introduce uh, Shirelle, who is waving her hand there. She is our new program support officer here at IAS, helping the River Cities Network. So we are very happy to have you on board. If you can wave your hand again, then the people can see you. So Sherelle will be helping us with uh, all kinds of things here in the network. So uh, without any further ado, uh, please, Mohammed, Nancy, and Asma, the floor is yours. I'll take the first one. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone, for attending this, uh, I hope, uh, interesting introduction, presentation of our water body that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but to understand why it doesn't exist, we, 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 have, we have to understand the history that is involving behind the, the, the creation and yet the discreation of this water body. And to understand the history of any, uh, any, uh, any water body around the globe, you have to bear in mind that water bodies are always political issues. They're always connected to uh, political power. You have nations who raise nations poor only because of the water body. If you look around the news, you will see uh, the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine is all behind. It's uh, a way to dominate the access to the sea or the port or whatever, which is impact the economy and the economy impacts the policies. If you check what is happening between Ethiopia and Egypt, it's uh, again about the security of water. If you check between what is happening between Ethiopia and Eritrea, it's water. Ethiopia and the black milling of Djibouti, it's water. So if you trace the history, you would find the roots of water is the main, in my opinion, the main drive behind the, the aggression and the peace in the world. Egypt is no exception. If you check this announcement that everyone in 1855 would be able to be with his morning cup of tea to read that the Mahmoudiyah Canal, which is stretches in Egypt, will be closed for uh, regular maintenance, you would come to, sur to, to, to surprise you why this is an important announcement in different parts of the world. But to, to, to get to understand why it's important, you have to understand all the history and all the, 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 the drives behind this. Talking about Alexandria, in the early ages, since the, before the creation of Alexandria in 1331 and 331, there was a branch coming from the River Nile. If you see on this map, I don't know if you see my mouse moving or not. The branch was coming out almost here, going to this lake, which is the Lake Mariotis, which at the time, at the Roman time, was much, much more bigger, and it was drinkable water. And this was a source of drinkable water to Alexandria and the whole region. By the time of the Romans, we had a port almost here and another port almost here. And this lake was connected to the sea. That's why the water was draining, draining to the sea. And it was, as I mentioned, drinkable water. 
by the time the lack of maintenance and much important the change of policies of the rulers, this water body had became neglected. It lost its power. And why it's lost its power? Because of security. A water body needs a lot of security. So by the time of the Arab invasion to Egypt, they were not seamen. They were a desert men. They were fighting on horse, not on ship. So it was much easier for them to neglect this, to let this water body. By the time it was silted up and this lake was closed and it became salted water. And then we have lost this branch that is connecting Alexandria to the River Nile. Then by the year 1811, Alexandria, Egypt has uh, became uh, a little bit autonomous from the uh, Ottoman Empire. We had a viceroy, his name is Muhammad Ali, who wanted to, uh, to have the country almost for himself. So if you check the map of the Ottoman Empire, Egypt has a, a, a very complicated and different uh, policy. It was part of the Ottoman Empire, but yet it was autonomous. And to maintain the autonomous, auto, uh, the, to maintain Egypt autonomous space, Muhammad Ali did a lot of reforms, or I would say changed, that helped him to maintain his power on this part of land, which is the gate of Africa, and also to influence the other, the, the other, the bigger globe. In in order to do this, he understood that Egypt needs a modern port on the Mediterranean. For this. He recreated a canal, which is man-made, which we see here in, in red, that he almost followed the path of the old branch of the Nile. This canal was built or dug by folk. And there are always uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages is that it gives birth to Alexander. Because simply it attracted the labor, whether at the beginning they were forced, but after, with the market it created, it gave birth to the city again. And the, the population of Alexandria had risen from just 4,000 to 64,000 at the time. The canal was open between uh, 1819 and 1821. And if we go back again to this announcement, it's 1855, which is almost 12 years before the inauguration of the Suez Canal, that shows you how much important was this canal. So simply this canal has connected Egypt to the forces who are fighting to dominate Egypt. Not only because Egypt is, is great, but because if we check on this map, which was produced in England, if I can zoom here, you can see that they produced a map which is written on it from England. And if you choose trace the bigger map, you will see a navigation route that enabled the two competent countries, which is England and France, to dominate Egypt, especially England, because she, she took this path to come to Alexandria. It was the safest port, because if you look on the, on the west, you have uh, Algeria and Tunisia was almost pirates of the Ottoman Empire, so they could not enter the ports there. Morocco was almost independent. So the only safe access was, and close access was Alexandria. They took Alexandria, then they took this canal, which connected them to the River Nile. They took the River Nile down in Egypt. Then they crossed the desert to take the Red Sea. Then they go to the Pacific Ocean, and then they arrived in India, which was the short, mm -hmm. shortest way from, for the British trade in and from India. Another point, it's linked to the geography, why this canal and the river Nile was important for England. First is that the topography of Egypt, of Egypt is on the delta, on the river Nile, is low. And if you go down to the source of the river, Lake Victoria is high. That means the current of the river is going from south to north. That also means it secure uh, a fast, rapid movement of the ships without consuming power, which power at the time was steam, cool and steam. And on the, so if you are coming from the south, you take just the, 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 the current of the river, and then you arrive the port of Alexandria through the canal. If you are going the rivers, Egypt receives 
the wind which blows all the year from the north, strong wind. So you again just need to raise your sails and then you have safe, clean, rapid and secure trade. All these are reasons that made Egypt a spot that everyone needed to control, which at the end led to the occupation of Egypt in 1881 by the, the, the Great Britain. So we would see that the two canals, Suez on the east and Mahmudiyya on the east, were one of the main drives behind a major political change in Egypt. Apart from, aside from this, this, the creation of this canal had led to big reform and change to the image of Alexandria, the one we know now. Thanks to the canal, we have the creation of the port, the port of the sea and the inner port we have passed by when we, uh, we almost hit a truck. Uh, we were driving when we were in Alexandria, which was an inner port on the canal. In between these two ports, we had a rich uh, industrial heritage. It ranged from factories, warehouses, uh, markets, and even there were a big international booth there. These are some of the few remains of this rich industrial heritage. Then, I'm cutting short the speech, by the time, again, of the political reform, if you trace the history of Alexandria, of Egypt, the, from the year 19, especially after the Second World War, the nationalism in Egypt has risen. And uh, there were a coup in 1952, which took power, and uh, kicked out the British invader or, and Egypt became independent. And again, for many security reasons, the canal became a threat. It was easier to control the land than controlling the water bodies. Because simply water bodies need a lot of security alongside the stretch of the canal. So the canal had very few attention and started to degrade, 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 de till we reached the year 2000 which had witnessed some reform started from the main port of Alexandria. They enlarged the docks, they uh, built new uh, cays, they uh, uh, renovated the infrastructure and introduced the technology in the port, which is uh, till, till the moment pretty successful, but not impacting economically, not only because of the port, but because of the services and the disconnectivity that resulted because of the canal and because of so many political and economical issues. Also in the year 2000, the government of Alexandria had give, given a big interest to renovate the canal, expand it, clean it, and make it a, a, a visual water body. It was, at that time, it was not functioning as a navigation route. But I, which this era was really enjoyable. You, 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 you could have a promenade there, you could have, have some good timing, you, there was some green, I could have seen uh, kids playing, families, of course, from a specific uh, background, they are going to use this public space. Then again, as I mentioned earlier, it was very, very short. Because when we reached the year 2018, this is the image of the canal. And in my opinion, it has been led to reach this situation on purpose. Uh, without going into details, this was the result of the entire canal inside Alexandria. I forgot to mention that this canal stretched for 77 kilometers, starting from Alexandria, reaching to one branch of the River Nile. And this is almost half of the original length of the Suez Canal. So by the time when the part inside Alexandria has reached this critical situation, the, the citizens have already fed up. Because if you see this amount of trash, it causes a lot of disease, a lot of insects, a lot of uh, murder cases. You could have seen almost on a weekly basis that they discover uh, dead bodies in the canal. And this was lit to reach this situation, as I mentioned, on purpose, because when the, 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 the state come to a decision in 2018, deciding that we will fill 
in the canal and transform it to a road, everyone was almost happy. I mean, everyone of the, the, the one who, the academic, I mean, the, the real users of the space. When you make it a road, that means all the diseases they used to have, it will vanish. All the killing will vanish. That it will introduce some kind of fake security to them. That's why it was well received among the, the, the entire users of these uh, spaces, which is almost 21 kilometers inside Alexandria. It's big. Much worse. Uh, maybe I have mentioned this to you when you were in, uh, in Alexandria. Paul, Alexandria is a very linear city. A linear city always faces uh, traffic conjunctions, and it forces the urban planners to create very linear roads to take the, the commuters from the west to the east. And Alexandria also, again, the, the land use map of, of it is it's divided. You would find the industry uh, on the edges, on the west, uh, on the west, where you have the uh, all the industry related to cement, petroleum, whatever, and in the east, closer to the uh, the delta, you will have the industries that are built on agriculture. So every day, you have commuters that coming from the crossing east west, which they need a fast. Uh, traffic road. And that had led to the bad perception of this road because the one who take this uh, axe, they are happy that they can drive fast. They can arrive their work faster. But here we would see that the criteria was only the traffic. And by the way, this traffic, if it was, if it solved the problem at the beginning, now it started to cause more problem uh, alongside the construction. It, it was very, very, very expensive because you needed to build the, you turn bridges to go to cross Alexandria, to reach to the perpendicular ways. We are not talking yet about the impact, environmental, uh, cultural, uh, mental, uh, and the, the impacts on the society, as now we'll, we'll, uh, we'll mention. But this is the image of the canal now. If you see this, one of these notes was a his, his once facing uh, water body, now it's facing a road. Uh, as I mentioned, they took this yellow part and converted it into a road, which is 21 kilometers. But the canal yet still working till it reached its uh, source on the river on the river Nile. Maybe Asma can elaborate more on the starting of the canal. And here is more information. They converted the road because they 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 they, they did not only fill the canal and convert it into a road. They took almost 50 meters from each side to enlarge the road. And these 50 meters from the side had led to a catastrophic demolition of a lot of industrial heritage, as I mentioned uh, earlier, which is a loss that cannot be recovered. Here again, by transforming it into a road, they have led just almost uh, around uh, three or four kilometers, which is the back, uh, the black dot on the close to the port that is still filled with water, which we, we have seen on the photo. And of course, it stopped here. The water movement itself is still working under uh, uh, tubes under, underground. And here is like uh, uh, summarizing of the transformation of the historical transformation of the canal. I would let the floor for Asma to explain more the impacts this film uh, on, on uh, Alexandria and on also the North Coast. Asma? Discuss the problems uh, and the negative impacts uh, of this transformation of Mahmoudia Canal uh, from. Asma, can, you, can you raise your voice? We, we don't hear you. Okay. The, uh, Asma, uh, the connection is bad. No, we don't see. Hear now? We hear you. 
Okay, we hear you. Okay, um, now uh, we will discuss the problems and the negative impacts of this uh, uh, transformation uh, of Mahmoudia Canal from is an important uh, uh, canal supplying water to uh, to the city uh, to be highway. Uh, the impacts will be divided uh, into uh, three sections, environmental impacts, uh, physical and social impacts, and finally, economic uh, impacts. First, environmental impacts. Uh, we start with environmental impacts. Uh, the first negative effect is uh, traffic volume. Um, higher uh, concentration of fine dust, uh, increase in uh, noise level. Um, uh, as we know, uh, because Al Al Alexandria is a port city, uh, so it suffers from uh, global warming and climate change. Uh, so uh, uh, this transformation will affect uh, in the inner city by higher temperature. Uh, then in uh, in the surrounding area, uh, also urban heat uh, island impact, heat related illnesses and uh, entail higher cooling demand and cost. Uh, and finally, the historic landscape and the structure will be uh, demolished. Uh, in my uh, view, uh, the most important negative. Uh, uh, effect from my point of view is the leak of the amount of water uh, after this transformation. The second uh, negative effect is uh, physical and social impacts. Uh, leak of uh, urban green spaces, uh, the presence of uh, large appointed areas along the axis. Uh, so this leads uh, to uh, lack of safety uh, for the inhabitants, um, also total isolation from the surrounding uh, environment. Uh, finally, uh, the economic impact. Because uh, Alexandria City suffers from uh, sea level rise, um, is expected to rise uh, between uh, 0.2 meter and uh, uh, 0.25 uh, meter uh, at Alexandria by 2050. Uh, this uh, sea level rise will threaten the fissures of the Mediterranean Sea coast in Egypt. Uh, Alexandria decreased the hotel occupancy from 54.3% uh, uh, in 2018 to 39.9% uh, in 2020. Uh, the, the impacts of coastal uh, natural disasters and climate change are estimated uh, uh, to the coastal to, uh, to cost the city of Alexandria approximately uh, 1.22 billion. Now, as Nancy will uh, continue. Just to conclude that this was just a reflection of the in, in numbers of the, the how a bad decision can lead to a, a bigger problem that was not really engaging all the decision makers, even if they were engaged in our opinion, because this is the, the that led to our research. They didn't have enough knowledge to argue, to win to, to a good argument on why not to make it our own, why to solve it in a different way. For this, we are originally, we proposed to create a pilot project. And then by conducting our first field research, we discovered that we are somehow repeating the, the methodology of the state. We are imposing our ideas. We thought that we, we it's good to uh, restore the canal, make, uh, make it green, uh, restore the biodiversity, make it a uh, uh, good promenade, but we were surprised that people doesn't don't need this. So for this, Asma and Nancy will talk to us about our, our methodology for the next step of our project. Nancy, the floor is you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Asma. So, um, 
Did you change the slide? I just shown some images to show the state now of the fog connected to the port. Okay. Okay, so as uh, all of us uh, know that at the beginning of the 20th century, um, with the Industrial Revolution, the urbanists were encouraging the uh, people uh, to use more gasoline, as Le Corbusier said uh, in his statement or in his quote that you see now, uh, to build a dependent car city. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the next piece, as you see in the 21st century, uh, we're still in Egypt, uh, following the, the modern theories. Um, as you can see, the Mahmoudi Alab de Corniche has been transformed to, um, into uh, eight lanes uh, of axes or highway uh, in, the next, um, in the right image, uh, as you can see. So to uh, assess the impact of this uh, change uh, and transformation and make uh, people more understand the, uh, the impact not only uh, as Muhammad and uh, said in his uh, part that the people are happy to uh, to drive uh, more quickly and to uh, reach their ways uh, in a short time, but to understand uh, to make them understand this uh, impact from our point of view as a specialist and academics, we um, began to make an uh, we decide to make an investigation to collect this their opinion. Uh, of the all stakeholders, not only uh, the decision makers or uh, the authority, and more of, but also the users and uh, we, we and the academics and the, the urbanists uh, who uh, and the activists as well who work in the space. We uh, divided the, our uh, survey into uh, uh, three parts um, that will cover all this. The first one is the social dimension part. And uh, so uh, after uh, the general demographic uh, information that uh, all of us know, we will begin to see the perception of this transformation, how uh, has affect uh, this transformation, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the place, and the awareness of, uh, of the users or the inhabitants uh, in this place about this transformation, the interaction between the community is, is, is it influencing um, their uh, daily life uh, in in, um, in terms of <clears throat> gathering uh, as a neighbors or to uh, make some events and their opinion about the project? Did it affect their quality of life and uh, the well-being of the community? And uh, as well as we are gonna see the, uh, how they perceive uh, the loss of some historical significance that uh, Muhammad mentioned in the beginning of. Uh, his presentation. Um, uh, uh, if you please, the second uh, slide. The second one is the economic uh, dimension, and the, the economic dimension will cover uh, how was uh, the, the projects uh, change the local business, and the, is it create some job opportunities or uh, actually uh, eliminate some uh, some uh, 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 jobs or some commercial activities that has been there. Uh, if the, um, there is a new business has appears, uh, is the income uh, has been changed, uh, either increase or decrease? Uh, the, is there some new uh, commercial activities have been uh, evolved or um, or some new in investment? As well as we will gonna check the part of the tourism and the hospitality of the space. And then we can see the value of the property and the land value. Uh, the financial uh, uh, implication in terms of uh, the increase of transportation cost uh, for those who don't use cars because uh, in the urban slide uh, we're going to see the, the, the impact of the transportation in this area. The economic diversity as well as uh, economic uh, resilience uh, in terms of measuring the place to promote economic uh, resilience more uh, uh, in light of the challenges that face the city. Finally, uh, the third dimension, which is the urban uh, uh, dimension. And in this part, uh, we will gonna see uh, and assess the impact uh, of the mobility. Uh, this is uh, uh, not only the car uh, dependence or the people who use their car, but also in terms of the, uh, the public transportation, 
houses affect the public transportation, it is convenient for them if there is there is a um, stop for the public transportation and the buses. Um, uh, and we're gonna see if they are aware of the environmental changes that Asmat talk about, as well as uh, accessibility and connectivity uh, of the uh, of the of the place and how uh, um, the highway. Uh, make more accessible or for the transportation or no uh, of course the pedestrian because eight lane uh, um, or eight lane street is very difficult to be uh, crossed and uh, if the if the pedestrian um, bridges that Muhammad mentioned uh, are working uh, effectively for them or uh, or no um, here now in Egypt we are uh, Encouraging now the, to, to use this bicycle is there a lane for cycling in that place or no? Uh, we're gonna see as well the green spaces. Is the next slide, please? Uh, if uh, is that in fact is a uh, affect sorry the the spaces and the creation of spaces uh, in the in, in the area um, and the livability as the overall livability of the city, uh, the aesthetics of the urban space. As well as uh, zoning and the uh, there is a concern to balance between uh, the residential and commercial and industrial space uh, uh, within the area. The last slide. Okay. Uh, as well as uh, uh, social intersection, because uh, actually in Egypt you have a very uh, dynamic social life that people all, all the time love to go out and to gather together. So after making a very big highway, it will. Uh, uh, we affect their social life because um, at the end, if you are, are asking this question, their uh, their way of thinking uh, will go more about not only it is uh, it has solved a problem of transportation of traffic jam, but also there is other uh, aspects that they will not uh, see it right now and are not uh, uh, affected. Their uh, maybe they are they are not make a, a big effect now, but on the on the second uh, on the future years. This, uh, this effect will be uh, increased and uh, they, uh, it will be more uh, uh, obvious, uh, especially in the social life and how the urban affects the social life. At the end, I will, would like to show you a proposal that has been done uh, with a, a, a big architect in Alexandria uh, for the French Institute uh, that has been done, as you see, in 2014. Uh, as you can see in this uh, in this project, uh, they transform the canal uh, and they make the proposal and the design um, in the in the right uh, proposal. As you can see, more uh, more related to the actual uh, activities within the left space. And this uh, this photo in the left uh, was at the end of. Uh, in 2014, as Mohammed shows you, that in this uh, uh, period of time, uh, the Corniche and the canal has been transformed to a uh, garbage place and so on. So as you can see, this uh, the left project um, make uh, respect to the position, uh, create new recreational spaces that uh, respect the social gathering and so on, as well as the commercial, a new commercial space that can make a revenue not only for uh, the citizen, but also for the government uh, or the authority so they can maintain the place. But unfortunately, um, as I mentioned in the beginning of my section, that we still uh, following uh, Le Corbusier statement to uh, make wider seat and the modern series. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Nancy. To summarize, we, are, we had two sections. One is the, the, the heavy history and the, the, the birth and death of this tiny canal, how it was impacting and how it is still impacting. And this is a knowledge we have. The other section is, is being skipped, which is the knowledge that we don't have. And you would see that always the decision makers, they jump into the physical creation. They should create something quickly. Unstudied in the preparing and unstudied as a result. Our methodology is to generate real knowledge, which is in itself could be a pilot project. How to generate knowledge built upon the methodologies that Nancy mentioned, 
which could lead to the greater involvement of all the sectors or the users of the city entirely, considering the national and international situation in order to reach to a good decision. Whatever the application that will come at the end, we should make sure if it was built on this real knowledge, it would fit and it would be sustainable. But we have to add into consideration the general uh, political landscape, which is uh, not easy to, to, to work with. We should not aim for a, a big project. But in my opinion, if we just manage to, to generate knowledge, this is a real success. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul, you can stop the recording if you would like. Thank you very much. I will stop the recording now.